Hi guys. All right, it feels like springtime is returning. We are back to back to t-shirts and bare feet here and uh, after our what was it our two days of winter, but it is now a Tuesday evening and that is January 20 3rd 2024 and of course January 23rd is the day that all doomers look forward to because this is the day that we find out where the doomsday clock is sitting for 2024 the doomsday clock reveals how close we are to total annihilation all right, so where are we? The doomsday clock that has been ticking for 77 years is no ordinary clock. It attempts to gauge how close humanity is to destroying the world. On Tuesday, this afternoon, <coughs> the clock was again set at 90 seconds to midnight. So it is 11.58 and 30 seconds p.m. is where we are still on the clock. This is the closest to the hour it has ever been, according to the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists, who created the clock in 1947. Midnight, 90 seconds from now, represents the moment at which people will have made Earth uninhabitable. Last year, the bulletin set the clock at 90 seconds to midnight, mainly due to Russia's invasion of Ukraine and the increased risk of nuclear escalation. It had been sitting at 100 seconds to midnight for the three previous years. The clock is not designed to definitively measure existential risk threats, but rather to spark conversations about difficult topics. Hmm. The decision to keep the clock at the same time this year is largely due to ongoing concerns about the war in Ukraine. But now we can add the Israel-Gaza conflict, the potential of a nuclear arms race, and the climate crisis. Rachel Bronson, president and CEO of the Bulletin, said today, quote, quoting uh, Ms. Bronson, trends continue to point ominously towards global catastrophe. Dun, 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 dun. The countries with nuclear weapons are engaged in modernization programs that threaten to create a nuclear arms race. Earth experienced its hottest year on record, and massive floods, fires, and other climate related disasters have taken root and lack of action on climate change threatens billions of lives and livelihoods." Close quote. Bronson cited recent advances in artificial intelligence as another concern, saying they, quote, raise a variety of questions about how to control a technology that could improve or threaten civilization in countless ways. Um, so, what happens if the doomsday clock reaches midnight? 90 more seconds. The clock has never reached midnight. And Bronson Huh, Bronson Huh, Bronson Huh, huh oops, it never will. Quote When the clock reaches midnight, 
that means there has been some sort of nuclear exchange or catastrophic climate change that has wiped out humanity. We never really want to get there, and we won't know it when we do. <laughs> oh, God, 90 seconds, my ass. Uh, anyway, as long as I'm over here at the mainstream media, here's one. Uh, I guess the doomsday clock is at midnight for this mountain lion. Beloved mountain lion dies crossing this same California highway where her cubs were killed. Yes, wildlife and nature enthusiasts are grieving a famous mountain lion after it was hit by a car and killed while crossing a highway in Southern California. Quoting the uh, press release, <clears throat> her name was uh, Uma Uno. Uno succumbed to the most common cause of death for mountain lions in our area, being killed while crossing roads and highways, something that any local mountain lion has to do many times in a lifetime due to their large territories and the number of busy streets and roads in our area, otherwise known as the number of humans. But uh, anybody thinking that coral reefs are doomed? Uh, well, Maybe you're right. <clears throat> Deep sea coral reef the size of Vermont discovered off the U.S. After a disastrous year for coral reefs in which abnormally high ocean temperatures served a fatal blow to many of the vital underwater ecosystems, researchers have found a glimmer of hope. <laughs> researchers have found a glimmer of hope a glimmer of who? A glimmer of who? Uh, 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 off the coast of the U.S., the largest ever deep sea coral reef. Yes. All right. Um, the newly discovered reef covers six point four million acres, an area larger than Vermont. Uh, blah. The newly uncovered region has the most extensive ecosystem of these deep water corals ever found in U.S. waters with mounds estimated to be thousands of years old. But, as study authors noted, habitats for these types of coral are slow-growing, long-lived, and fragile. Human activities, huh, otherwise known as humans, human activities including trawling, pipelines, and oil and mineral production and exploration make these areas particularly vulnerable. Uh, yep. Uh, and then they go in and let's see, I'm sure there's more. Last year proved to be difficult for shallower coral reefs off Florida's coast, researchers found 100% coral mortality at one restoration site in July that has been long frequented by snorkelers and divers. Another coral restoration site lost almost all of its corals, caretakers said, as ocean temperatures soared to levels far 
above the norm at some points in the triple digits, while coral bleaching from high temperatures may not be a significant threat to these deep water systems right now, NOAA says that human activities pose a major threat to these systems which provide habitat to invertebrates and fish. Many of these areas are also where oil and gas operations are conducted, making them susceptible to oil spills, mineral mining, otherwise known as deep sea mining, also poses a threat, the study authors noted, quoting the study, mining machines are large and may permanently remove large areas of deep sea coral habitat. In addition, future impacts from climate change are not well understood, but increasing temperatures may shift species distribution and increasing acidity, <clears throat> weaken coral skeletons, particularly in deeper waters where the impacts of ocean acidification are thought to be the greatest. There you go. And so there we go on the mainstream media. So uh, how long have I been on here for? Do we have time to jump over to medium.com to see what Brother B uh, has to say today, Brother B is already looking ahead to 2025, a civilizational tipping point. <clears throat> yes, there is a growing body of evidence that the 2024 to 2030 period will present us with a critical juncture upending a centuries-long era of economic growth. No, it will have nothing to do with climate change or novel viruses. Those two will come somewhat later. Missing entirely from mainstream discourse, there is a greatly overlooked side of our predicament which will set a nice little game of musical chairs in motion, most probably around 2025. Fasten your seatbelts while you still can. We live in a supermassive complex system often referred to as modernity. Industrial civilization or the world economy this enormous organism has a life of its own with its own inputs, resources, and outputs pollution as well as its own life cycle. It is something best understood through the lens of systems dynamics, a modeling method developed in the late 1960s. The first results were published in 1972 in a study titled limits to growth without going too much into the details, which anyone on this channel has heard a hundred times before, the authors were tracking the many interconnections between just five key factors, non-renewable natural resources, persistent pollution, population, food production, and industrial output and establish various scenarios. One of them was world free or business as usual. There were multiple follow-ups to the original study, all published in peer-reviewed scientific journals. All proved the original concept to be correct and confirmed that we are indeed following the BAU World 3 scenario. Yes, the latest iteration of these follow-up studies was titled Recalibration 23, published in November of 23. Uh, 
by looking at the chart above from the most recent model, one can easily understand the interrelated nature of the systems. Uh, just concentrate on the continuous lines as resources go down and deplete both industrial output and food production goes through a tipping point and starts to decline. As a result, world population peaks and dwindles. Pollution will keep rising though as people go back to less cleaner technologies and burn just about everything they can to put their hands on to stay warm in the winter. Needless to say, no model is perfect uh, since our world is immeasurably more complex than what these five factors alone show. It is impossible to make precise predictions on exactly when and where things will go south. Uh, <clears throat> Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, this is a quote from uh, Recalibration 23 follow-up study of the limits to growth. Uh, quote, Like the business as usual scenario of the limits to growth publication, the new scenario, Recalibration 23, reflects the overshoot and collapse mode due to resource scarcity. scarcity. Here, the model results clearly indicate the imminent end of the exponential growth curve. The excessive consumption of resources by industry and industrial agriculture to feed a growing world population is depleting reserves to the point where the system is no longer sustainable. Pollution lags behind industrial growth and does not peak till the end of the century. Peaks are followed by sharp declines in several characteristics. <clears throat> this interconnected collapse uh, or as it has been called by Heinberg and Miller, the poly crisis occurring between 2024 and 2030 is caused by resource pollution, not, pol not resource depletion, not pollution. Going back to Brother B, the main message here is that it looks increasingly certain that we will run out of resources sooner than the coming deterioration of the climate could put an end to our lifestyle. And that's quite a feat, knowing how a growing Earth energy imbalance has accelerated warming recently. The model also assigns a not so distant time frame when the whole economic model we thought to be relevant for centuries to come might go badly wrong. And then B dives into this long discourse uh, on peak oil. You know, the same rant I have been hearing since I went down this rabbit hole in 2008. I have been down in this rabbit hole for since 2008 hearing an almost identical rant, but the, the year keeps changing and you wonder why people are accusing these peak oil alarmists for being the boy who cried wolf. Now, of course, if you keep throwing enough shit on the wall, eventually some is going to stick. And uh, now uh, B is claiming 2025. Anyway, let's skip through all of this. You're welcome to go on medium.com and read all of this peak oil stuff yourself. But uh, let's get to the... Uh, 
let's get towards the bottom. Tumultuous times are all but guaranteed in the decades ahead. On a local economic level, large building projects might be canceled due to shortages and skyrocketing costs, leaving the infrastructure in an ever more deprived state. Yep, yep, yep. Remote working could again become the norm, at least for those who still have a job. Large manufacturing companies will go bankrupt one after the other. The detrimental effects of climate change unleashed by burning all that oil, coal, and, ga and natural gas will become impossible to fend off. Business as usual will no longer be possible. Welcome to the collapse of modernity, a long, drawn-out decline. Well, uh, I'm not uh, quite sure about that, but anyway, bottom line, there is absolutely nothing new in this. Every civilization, ours included, grew by living at living up its one-time inheritance, be that fertile topsoil or petroleum, overshooting both the natural carrying capacity of its environment and the non-renewable resource base it relied on. Then, as resources got depleted below a critical level, they all went through their respective phases of Collapse. Decline is a perfectly normal, easy to understand part of every society's life. Once you move beyond denial and bargaining, it becomes clear as daylight that it has its cause in our biology, physics, and Earth's geology. There is really no one to blame. There is really no super duper technology holding the key to saving civilization either. It is a wholly unsustainable proposition from the get go. At this point, if we had access to a truly gener general AI capable of understanding our world, with all its interrelatedness, it would say only this, quote, you should not have embarked on this journey and destroyed the planet in the process to ask me at the very end what to do. There is nothing left to do to prevent collapse. Now it's time to pre prepare for a long, hard, and bumpy landing. Oh, and try not to exterminate yourself in the process. Good day, and good luck. And finishing up with Brother B, still from an individual person's perspective, the end of modernity will take an awful lot of time to unfold. However, it will also give us plenty of opportunities to reconnect with our environment, neighbors, and family, or develop new skills and traits. Perhaps it will teach us a thing or two about what's important in life and give a new meaning to our short existence on this planet. Be that as it may, one no longer can bury its head into the sand. There you go. Thank you, uh, AI, for summing it all up. What was that? There is nothing left to do to prevent collapse because, sorry, we're fucked. And I'm gonna get out there and enjoy a can of uh, 
Campbell's Chunky Clam Chowder while I still can. Bye, guys. Tick, tick, tick goes the doomsday clock.